We've all probably used magnets on our refrigerators or in science class, but what really is a magnetic field and how does it apply forces on objects? While there are many ways to create a magnetic field, such as through a permanent or electromagnet, the fundamental idea is that magnetic fields, like electric fields, can apply forces on certain objects. The magnetic field is usually denoted by the vector B, and is measured in a unit called Teslas. One type of magnetic force is known as a Lorentz force, and it deals with charged objects moving through magnetic fields. The equation for this force is that the Lorentz force equals the charge of the object times the cross product of its velocity and the surrounding magnetic field. While this equation may seem simple at first, there's a couple of important components and applications when it comes to the Lorentz force. The first thing to note is that this force involves a cross product between two vectors, velocity and magnetic field. Just as a quick review, the cross product has a magnitude of the scalar product of the vector's magnitudes times the sine of the angle between them, with a direction that can be calculated using the right-hand rule. While there are many different versions of the right-hand rule, my favorite is to point your right index finger along the first vector, your right middle finger along the second, with your thumb pointing in the direction of the cross product. This also means that charges that either aren't moving or are moving parallel to the magnetic field do not feel a Lorentz force. In addition, for electrons or other negatively charged objects, make sure to reverse the direction found using the right-hand rule, as your charge Q will have a negative sign attached to it. Because the cross product produces a force always orthogonal to the velocity vector, the Lorentz force acts as a centripetal force for charged particles moving through magnetic fields, making them move in circles. Equating the centripetal force to the Lorentz force, it's not hard to find quantities like the radius of curvature of the particle or angular frequencies of orbits. One final phenomenon associated with the Lorentz force is known as the Hall effect. The Hall effect describes a potential difference formed in a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field, as the moving charges will feel a Lorentz force and be deflected, thus creating an electric field across a conductor that opposes the Lorentz force until they cancel each other out. Using the magnetic field, current, charge, thickness, and potential difference of the conductor, it's possible to find the number density of charge carriers. However, another type of force magnetic fields can apply is on lengths of current carrying wire. The equation for this type of force is that the force equals the integral of the current times the cross product between the lengths of the wire and the magnetic field vector. However, in most cases, this equation for straight wires in uniform magnetic fields can be simplified significantly. One interesting application of this equation is that because current carrying wires actually create magnetic fields as well, two current carrying wires actually apply a force on one another. But let's see how to calculate this interaction force. For now, let's accept that the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire is given by this equation here, though its derivation can be seen in my Ampere's Law video. Applying this equation with the F equals ILB equation, we can find an equation for the interaction force between two current carrying wires. Applying the right-hand rule, we can also notice that currents running parallel in the same direction create an attraction force, while currents running in opposite directions create repulsion forces. One final application is when we look at a loop or coil of wire placed in a magnetic field. Though after some inspection it's obvious that the forces on all four sides of this rectangle cancel each other out, creating a force of zero, a torque is actually created due to the magnetic forces. In fact, the torque on a coil or loop of wire is related to the number of coils, current, area, magnetic field, and orientation of this coil. This equation can actually be rewritten as a cross product between something known as a magnetic dipole moment mu and the magnetic field, and this is actually the basis for a simple DC motor. It often can feel like magic that objects placed in the middle of nothing can still move and feel forces based on magnetic fields. However, there are countless applications of these forces in our day-to-day -day lives, many of which are much more complicated than the examples in this video. But for now, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about magnetic fields and their forces on charged particles and current carrying wires.